Hi, today I wanted to walk through my setups for growing Genlysia. Um, I was looking online and couldn't really find very many care videos for this, so I wanted to show you how I've done mine. So this is a hybrid that was available from California Carnivores, um, kind of here and there. I got it through um, a meetup. I think these are um, passed out at Carnivorous meetups sometimes. Um, I can put this species uh, in the um, documentation for this video. But the good news is that this grows essentially just like um, Tracera capensis. Uh, so really you just you can have 50-50 Peter Perlite or Peter Sand. Um, keep this wet like you would a capensis. I would say that you could even have this deeper. Uh, sometimes I've, I've covered this and um, they seem fine. Uh, I, I also put these in existing setups. Um, like you can see here, there are other plants in these. I was thinking that I didn't want to start with a brand new setup because I wanted there to be some, um, I guess, some fauna in the soil, if possible. Um, some kind of living things for them to feed on. I know they feed through their roots. I also tried glass vessels because I wanted to see if I could see the roots themselves. That was not completely successful. I'll zoom in here and show you what it actually ended up looking like. Uh, if you can see some. So here's some of the roots here. It's not terribly visible. I don't think I've ever seen you know anything get captured. I realize it's going to be probably smaller than I can see, but I was expecting this to be a little bit more maybe dramatic and striking. Um, it makes sense that the roots would try to dive to the interior, though. Um, that's probably where more food actually is. So, um, yeah, I would say there's a lot of comparison to uh, Utricularia, and I think that these are easier than that, frankly. I'm going to turn off a light back here. It seems a little bit too bright. Um, I would say they're easier than that, uh, but... I do kind of wonder, you know, my my story with Utricularia is if I try to grow them alone, try to grow them in their own sort of purpose-built pot, I feel like they're much finickier than if I just sort of let them exist with other, you know, primarily sundews. Um, I think what else to say here? I would say next for me, I'm going to try to uh, do a setup that's in water where I can see them more easily, the roots. I haven't attempted that yet. But um, I see that done fairly easily online. Maybe there's some kind of, uh, you know, net where I could have some soil and the roots could come out the bottom or some kind of setup like that and maybe one of these glass jars that I could do. Uh, you can also see that these are flowering. It was a pretty striking flower, I would say. I'm, I regret not making this video earlier. Um, you can see this a bit here. Uh, excuse the shakes. But, um, yeah, it was a pleasant flower. Uh, it flowered for a long time as well because I can't quite get this. Here we go. Um, but yeah, nice uh, nice color um, and again lasted quite a long time. Uh, I think that's that's about it for these. I guess I'll also mention too that they they do um, uh, divide and kind of fill out the pot pretty quickly and easily. I think I've had these planted for maybe two months and this one is uh, Definitely moving in here. It looks like there's a second uh, flower stalk coming as well. Um, yeah, I think that is probably all that I have to say. Just uh, let me know if you have any questions, um, and like and subscribe if you like these. Thanks.